Hello, hello everyone, and welcome to the second episode of Paleo Spotlight with your host, Bean. In this episode, I'll be teaching you all about an interesting little Triassic animal called Longus Guama insignis. When I first saw this animal, I admit, I had to do a quadruple take because I just couldn't believe it was real. This, the quadruple take, is in a different category altogether, but it's the only one I know. And you'll be glad to hear that I don't have anything beyond the quadruple take. <clears throat> you ready? Yes. Okay. Her buttons are the best. <laughs> that might have been actually the quintuple take. There are obviously many strange, weird, and outlandish extinct creatures in the paleological record that we know of, and likely even stranger creatures yet undiscovered. But this guy still stood out to me right away because of its namesake, the beautiful, long, feather-like structures on its back. Although the longest guama is only known from six incomplete fossils, five of which are only of its signature feathers or scales, I think the one fossil that we do have with its partial skeleton showing is really, really awesome. Longest guama quite appropriately means long scales, and insignis can mean remarkable or exceptional, which is certainly fitting in this case. I know I'm not the only one impressed by this animal, because just doing a simple search for him on websites like DeviantArt or Google bring up hundreds of artists' interpretations of him. There's a lot of art out there. Go check it out. I'm honestly surprised he hasn't been turned into a Pokemon yet. <sighs> well, a girl can dream. Even though there's only one mildly decent fossil of Longi, there's still quite a lot of information that we can still glean from it. He was a small animal, having both reptilian features, his body, and bird-like features, his feathers. He was from the middle to late Triassic period, and he was found in the Madigan Formation in Kyrgyzstan, which is a small and stunningly beautiful country bordering China and Kazakhstan. Just look at these pictures. The Madigan Formation is in the southwest area of the country and consists of ancient river and lake deposits. It was a thriving ecosystem abundant with all kinds of life, from weird flying lizards to giant bugs, sharks, and unique fish. From what I understand, during the Triassic, this area was a boggy, wet region, with alluvial fans, lakes, swamps, and quaggy areas spread all over. Longus guama likely fed on the abundance of insects that thrived in this swampy environment, perhaps living in the trees or the forest undergrowth, living out his days in a veritable insect paradise. After all, over 15,000 insect remains have been found at this site to date. Now, let's talk more about these feathers or scales or whatever the heck you want to call them. As you can imagine, paleontologists have been arguing about Longi and the strange structures on his back since the moment he was pulled out of the ground. Some think he could have used these structures to glide or fly, some think they were purely for display, and others think they weren't even a part of the animal at all and were fossilized plants that the Longus guama just happened to die on top of. Let's go ahead and examine all of this in further detail. Speculation like this is definitely one of my favorite parts of paleontology. So, the feathers of Longus guama are lengthy, narrow appendages that look a little bit like hockey sticks. They seem to be attached to its spine, the points of connection at their base showing raised lumps and even spacing. Soft tissue might have surrounded the base of the feathers, and there's a possibility that they could have actually anchored into a follicle similar to bird feathers or mammalian hair. As for what these feather-like structures are made out of, like most things in paleontology, it's basically impossible for us to know without some better evidence. Some scientists believe that they are elongated, ribbon-like scales, some believe they're made from skin, and others believe that they are primitive feathers or perhaps feather-related quills, similar to what Psittacosaurus had. Since these feather appendages are very strange looking, there was also an idea that they were actually fossilized plant remains and not attached to the animal at all. 
However, it was basically debunked as the feathers weren't preserved as carbon films like the rest of the plant fossils from the Madigan Formation. It's uncertain whether the feathers came in a pair on its back or if it was just one mohawk-like structure. Some researchers believe that the rows of feathers came in pairs and that Longus Guama could actually use them to parachute between trees or even glide. There have been arguments about whether or not Longi could be a primitive archosaur instead of a reptile and may even be related to the origin of birds somehow. However, this is heavily disputed as some paleontologists have found that the skull evidence suggests otherwise. They say the skull of Longi more resembles that of a diapsid, possibly related to, oh geez, um, Coelurosaurus instead of dinosaurs. Coelurosaurus are diapsid reptiles that had long rod-like bones that were actually apparently made of skin as they were not modified spines or rib bones. They could have been used for gliding if the pole-like structures were covered in skin, similar to a bat's wing. I personally really, really like this idea, as it makes more sense to me for Longi to be related to another weird gliding reptile boy instead of a flying dinosaur like Microraptor. However, it doesn't really matter what any of us wish Longisquama to be, as the classification of our precious long boy depends heavily on two major things. Its skull's true, undamaged form, and on whether or not its feathers were one row along its back or two. It certainly looks like the row is by itself in the fossil, and it makes more sense than anything else for them to just be a simple display structure for mating or identifying members of their own species, but honestly, until we find more fossils of Longisquama, all of these various theories and ideas just can't help but to be pure conjecture. Besides where it's from, and the fact that he had feather-like structures on his back, there's not much anyone can say with absolute certainty about this animal, besides the fact that it existed sometime, somewhere. Perhaps one day in the future, the Matic information can be studied more thoroughly and will hopefully yield more fossils of our favorite mysterious long boy. Thank you for joining me today in the second episode of Paleo Spotlight, and I hope you enjoyed this deep dive into one of the strangest animals I've ever had the pleasure of learning about, the longest squama. Catch you on the flip side.